So I was up early again on the flats. I'm making a bit of a habit at the moment, having to fish the, the bottom of a tide, and I was out on the low tide again. It was real low, and I was in a spot where um, it was pretty shallow, but I knew where the drop-offs were, because I've fished this area quite a bit. I've also gone with a shorter rod, because I knew you had to wait out pretty far, and wanted to be able to net fish. Because it was so low, it was not the time to use your divers. Probably more of a time where you would slow roll a soft plastic and the shallows or use a micro stick bait. Uh, in this case, I was using a buckaboo. I'm fishing downstream from uh, the city in the Swan River and it can be really plagued with blowfish, particularly as it starts to heat up. As I was retrieving in my lure, I'd get little nips on it or um, I would see the blowies following it. If you're using soft plastics, I'd be having towels nipped off, grubs cut in half, and you can go for a packet pretty quickly. Other things to consider when using a buckaboo is that you can actually use scent. So uh, usually when I'm flatty fishing with soft plastics, I can't use any S factor because that's you know a blowy's favourite sort of meal. Um, whereas if you put a little bit of S factor on uh, these types of lures. Um, you're going to attract and maybe hook a few blowies here and there um, but you don't have to worry about your lure getting demolished. I'm doing a pretty simple retrieve here, giving it two or three flicks every sort of three or four revolutions. I'm not pausing too long or going too slow just because it's quite shallow so um, if you're going real slow here it's just going to drag along the bottom. A little hit there. Perfect. Beautiful hookup. It's really cool when it's this shallow as well because you can really see the fish. It's taking my time. Got the rod up higher than I would if I was using trebles because I'm pretty confident with the hook set. Decided to drag him in because I wasn't too far out yet. Nice fish first thing in the morning. I don't think it even reached about 7 a.m. yet. Beautiful eating size flathead. Hooked right in the corner. After this one, I walked right out to a uh, drop off, which is probably close to like 100 meters or more out from the bank. When it's low tide like this, you can walk right out. You just gotta be careful where you walk and have a look at Google Maps to see where the flats are but just be aware that they often move depending on storms and whatnot as well so they won't be exactly the same as they were the year before you were there this is where you would want to have really good polarized sunglasses so you can see what you're doing particularly as when you get further out here you see lots of stingrays and whatnot and you can get a little bit gnarly the great thing about fishing these types of areas is that less people fish them so uh, you know the, the flathead don't see as many lures out here you also you can get some really nice steep drop-offs here. I've often found that when I've walked out these areas, I've you caught probably a, usually a better quality of fish. In this instance, I did get another one, but it was just a little bit smaller than the last one. Unfortunately, uh, I think I turned the camera off when I was supposed to turn it on when I was trying to save my batteries being out here. One thing to consider is when you are out here is how you're going to get back. Obviously if you trace the steps you before you'll be fine, but if you want to just sort of like beeline directly towards the bank, sometimes that's actually just going to take you through some really deep spots. Knowing where the tide is as well, so if you're right at the bottom you're usually going to be fine, but you just got to be careful if it's a rising tide. Here I'm sort of beelining towards the bank because I sort of know this spot pretty well. Um, but you can see here, even though I was out further, this is, you know, over waist deep now towards the bank. So you just got to be careful.
Anyways, can't go wrong with a couple of fish. Now it's time to make one of my most requested dishes from my family. Spicy Thai soup. So I'm starting off with a fresh paste. So I'm going to use four cloves of garlic, a shallot, thumb of ginger, coriander stalks and lemongrass. There was no good lemongrass around so I just used the packet stuff today. I put that into a blender with a little bit of water and some sunflower oil and I blitz it. I'll then cook out the paste in some oil for about five or six minutes until it's really fragrant. I'll then add about a litre of chicken stock. Here I'm just using the sort of like stock jellies, but yeah, any sort of stock will be fine as well, vegetable, even fish stock. I'll then add some bruised up kaffir lime leaves, so I'll give them a whack with the back of the, the knife to let the flavour come out. Pinch of uh, raw sugar, and then a glug of fish sauce. I'll add that in and out of the dish for the cook just to get the flavours right. Add in some carrot and I'll let that simmer for about 10 minutes. In the meantime I'll chop up the rest of the veggies. I'm just going to go with something simple today which is a bit of zucchini and broccoli. Give them about 5 minutes to simmer. While that's bubbling away I've just got some udon noodles so I'll cook these for a couple minutes and then run them over cold water so they don't cook anymore. Just make sure you never cook the noodles with the soup. Chop up the flathead into little bite-sized pieces. For the rest of the family, I'm using some uh, chicken breast, particularly because my wife doesn't eat any fish from the river. Into the soup mix, I'll put in half a can of coconut milk. Put my little section into another pot. I'm going to poach the flat end in there in these little bite sized pieces. I put this right in the end so it doesn't break up everywhere and it really only needs about two to three minutes for the flat end to poach. I'll then give a big squeeze of lime juice. I'll then add more fish sauce or sugar or a bit more lime just to get the taste right. I'll then pour that hot soup over those noodles, add a little bit of coriander. This paired with a nice crisp lager, you can't go wrong. So good. This is a perfect dish to add in some squid or some mussels. It's truly delicious. Thanks for watching. For more Perth Metro or Flathead videos, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section.